All right, all right, all right. We're going to be here starting shortly. I can get y'all, come on, come on in the front. It's 5 o'clock. Long, long day today. Awesome, awesome. So I just wanted to use this opportunity to introduce Exposure. Uh, my name is Danny Martin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Exposure. And today we're hosting a fireside chat with none other than Trey Thompson of the Dallas Mavs and Mavs Gaming as a community ambassador. Come on, one second, one second, one second. As well as we're going to be hosting a business plan competition. Uh, and it's pretty cool because this is special. We're in esports industry right now. And you see a lot of the competition inside of the actual space, this beautiful facility. And one of the things that we really want to shine light on is that this is an industry. And in order to be an industry, it has to make up of businesses. And one of the coolest things is we have the opportunity to work with students out of Dallas ISD to formulate a esports business plan, which is really, really cool because if you're an entrepreneur, this is like one of the most foundational elements that allows you to create your own company. And we really had the opportunity to work with these students for over around about three weeks now, three weeks, three weeks. Uh, e and even in the midst of their testing, which was really, really awesome to be able to know that they still had the fortitude to keep pushing uh, during this time. Right now, we're seeing middle school, high school, and collegiate competitions. So some of the best colleges are here cheering on their team. And we really wanted to be able to showcase on the business side just that itself. Um, for a little concept of exposure, we're an ed tech company that's based out of Duncanville, Texas. We have an 8,000 square foot esports studio and education center. Um, and fo for us, education is the primarily the focus for us because it allows us to have events, field trips, be able to speak on AV broadcasting and graphic design and so many other elements that are very critical to this infrastructure. But most importantly, we also have competitions, the fun elements just as much. And so, you know, we want to be able to shine light on all areas of esports and gaming, which is very, very critical to the infrastructure. So today, we're going to have some cool conversations, and we're going to start off by bringing up Trey Thompson. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You can sit down there, my friend. Everybody get a round of applause for Trey. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. So Trey. You know, I, I'm gonna stand up. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm sitting down, I'm at a place. I was gonna sit down too. Okay. You wanna sit down? Let's sit down, sit down together. Let's do this. All right, so Trey, I'm yes, gonna sir. read your bio. Is yes, okay? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. All right, so Trey Thompson serves as the Corporate Social Responsibility Community Relations Manager for Mavs Gaming, where he works to bridge the social and digital gaps through organic DEI community programs, creating a more unified and equitable world for all. With over six years of professional business in esports and sports, Thomas Thompson has managed sales and corporate business administration with the Dallas Cowboys and the Legends Hospitality, San Francisco 49ers, Dallas Mavericks, and now Mavs Gaming Esports. A former Duncanville High School alumni and 2012 UIL 5A 4x4 meter relay champion, Trey earned a bachelor's degree in business management from Northwood University and competed on Northwood's NCAA D2 track and field program as a 400 meter and 800 meter mid-distance sprinter. It is my privilege to have the opportunity to be able to speak with Trey. You got anything to say about that? Man, I'm just honored to be here. You know, it's a, a true testament to who you truly are as an individual. You've been putting in a lot of work and it's seen in all of these spaces, um, local, digitally, nationally, internationally. And so uh, I'm just honored to be able to share a space with you today and with all of you beautiful individuals in the crowd. Awesome, so the, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna kick it off. Yeah, let's do this. You've ran track. Yes, sir. At one of the highest levels from a collegiate perspective. Yeah. Running the 400 and 800. I ran 800 too. So yeah. <laughs> what was some of the things that you've taken from athletics that has helped you in life? Uh, the most important aspect that I learned is um, the, the value of time. Because in, the, in a track and field race, you may have, you know, people, eight people in a lane but the lanes don't matter. It doesn't matter who's in any of those lanes. So 
in life, you can see people in positions that are higher than you or lower than you, and it doesn't matter. It's we're racing against the clock because there's always a world record and a national record to accomplish. So for me, I look at life in the same in the same preface. It doesn't matter where I am in position. What matters is, is am I running my race? And with relays, am I contributing to the success of my team and others around me for the same common goal? I love it. Awesome. So let's talk about that. One of the things that we really want to shine light on is you guys and ladies are going to be going to college or working directly in the industry or going pro at any point. And we really wanted to talk about professional preparation. Like, what are some things that you need to know, you know, going into college to prep yourself to be successful but prepared, most importantly? Trey, talk about, you know, what should students right now think about in order to prep themselves for going to college or, or the industry? I feel like I was prepared for this question all week because um, I was talking with a student earlier uh, this week, and one of the things that I mentioned is when you go to college, you'll have maybe a professor that'll give you a book, and they will teach you and lecture you based on that book. They'll send you home with your homework assignments and your quizzes, et cetera, et cetera. Then you'll have a professor that may do, uh, they'll be lecture-based, where you'll go into their class and they'll sit down and give you a lecture, give you things to think about, have more engaging conversation, and then they may send you home with quizzes and homework assignments based on a book. But both of the professors have something in common. The most important thing that they give you for success is a syllabus. The syllabus is the tool that you need to be successful in each one of those classes because it gives you not only the instructions and the timeline on what you should expect and what you need to do, but it also gives you the contact and the information to reach out to that professor if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you need to dispute a grade, if you need to dispute uh, a paper that you wrote that you felt like you didn't get the right, you know, the, the, a fair shake on it. So the most important thing is there's many different styles of learning when you get to college. Understanding who you are and how you are is important, but structure is based on the syllabus. Follow your syllabus, which means just keep core values in who you are. You know, stand firm on what you believe in and what you already know that's gotten you already to that point. And now trust on building relationships with the professors as they are and trusting that syllabus for your road to success. Can you speak on some individuals in either high school or college that has really been there to help guide your life even to this point? And what some advice have they gave you, get, provided you? So for me, um, I've always kind of been a person that stood outside of the crowd. I'm, I'm never the one that's going to go with what everybody's doing. I always want to think about my choices and think about my life's consequences. Like a firefighter. Yeah. And so for me, you know, I moved around a lot growing up, so I never really had a lot of stability in keeping friends and maintaining friendships. Um, or even just like, you know, teachers kind of came and went. But I think the most important thing for me was knowing who I was within. And so each and every one of you know who you are because you live with yourself every single day. So it's important for you to figure out how can you, one, be the best version within yourself that you can be based on what you care about, what your passions are. But then on a twofold aspect of it, how can you build relationships with the people around you based on who you are? And, and then being able to accept others as they are. And I think that was, that was the most memorable thing for me growing up was the relationships that I would build. It didn't matter the walk of life. It didn't matter where you came from, if you had money, if you didn't have money. If you, if you were a person that was willing to sit down and have a conversation with me, guess what? Then you were a friend. And that, was the, that has carried me all the way to my professional career is connectedness, just making sure that, it does, that every person that I meet, there's an opportunity to get to learn something about that individual. And that has allowed me to, one, appreciate life a lot more, especially in this time and climate that we're in. But it's also allowed me to be able to see the value in others and what they bring to the table. And I now have the mindset to think, how can we leverage and utilize all of these skills to create a better world for the next generation? That's awesome. So you are a pillar with Mavs Gaming, a professional esports organization. Talk about Mavs Gaming. Who is Mavs Gaming? What does Mavs Gaming do? What is the NBA 2K League? Talk about all of those components so they can be privy yes. to what you do on a daily basis. Yes, yes. So um, Mavs Gaming is an NBA 2K League franchise, a part of the NBA 2K League. Um, this league was founded in 2017. Our first season took place in 2018. So to give some statistical facts, about every year 140 million people worldwide will purchase a copy of NBA 2K, whether it's a digital copy or a hard copy. They'll purchase it, but only about 250 actually make the NBA 2K League draft pool. And these, so these are some of the best NBA 2K players in the entire world. 
competing for about $2.2 million in cash prize pool winnings. And so how the franchise is structured, this year we have a 3v3. So actually, how many of you in here actually play NBA 2K or are familiar with the game? Ah, nice. <laughs> so essentially, um, we have a 3v3 mode, which is based on the park version of the game. And then we have our 5v5, which is based on the program and rec style. And so right now, we're actually current. Our team is right now in Washington, D.C., competing in our 3v3 um, a tournament to earn a playoff spot. So this game is set up. We have we draft five players, and these five players, we bring them in. You have to be 18 years or older to make the league. And so each NBA franchise or league that actually has a team, you're getting a base salary for that five and a half months just for being on the team. We're covering travel, so you get to travel all across for every tournament that takes place. We're covering their living expenses, so wherever they stay at, we're covering that. We're covering their food. We're covering they get all the nice swag uh, courtesy of our partners at Champion, and they get to be represented by an NBA team, so they get the accessibility of going to games and kind of being in that atmosphere. But one of the coolest things that with Mavs Gaming compared to a lot of other NBA 2K teams is we prioritize community. So while our team is in market and during the offseason, we're creating community programs to make sure that we can get out and service, whether it's through education, whether it's through military awareness, whether it's through um, a service, going out to the stew pot and doing just food donations and making sure that we're giving these guys an opportunity to get away from the screens, but get away from the screens with impact. So these guys are true professionals and girls. Since we've been in the NBA 2K League, we've had at least six girls that have actually made it at the professional level and have competed at the highest level of NBA 2K. So we're also advocates for girls in gaming. And so we want to make sure that we're creating programs that address girls in gaming, girls in coding, because we want to make sure that we have diverse and equitable tables whenever we're doing anything involved in gaming and community. Awesome. So let's talk about the life of a pro gamer at Mavs Gaming. What is the day to day from the time they wake up to the time they go to sleep? What does it look like to be a professional gamer? Yeah, so it's um, it's pretty intense. These uh, guys and girls, they're, they're practicing at least five to six days a week um, based on what the NBA 2K schedule is looking like. So they're practicing about five to six days a week, about six to seven hours of practice. So it's, it's, it's really sinuous because they're doing film study, um, especially when you have 3v3 and 5v5. They're having to prepare five uh, uh, members for two different versions of competition. So it's also scrimmaging against other NBA 2K League teams. Um, so that's the coolest thing about our league is they'll actually compete and practice against other teams before they actually go to live competition. So they're kind of, in a way, they're almost getting an opportunity to study their opponents, and they're studying them as well, and they're kind of building up strategies, and they're kind of building up their system and scheme. So, you know, after film studies and after practice sessions, um, they also make sure that they prioritize getting to know each other off the sticks. So whether that's, you know, make sure they're going off camp or going off in the off the um, headquarters and eating, uh, going out and playing you know, arcades together, watch, going to movies together, just, you know, really getting the playing cards, just kind of building that um, more organic uh, commonality and camaraderie amongst one another so that way they can also know how to pick one another up whenever somebody's down or whether they're having a slump or things aren't going well. They have to kind of build that relationship off the, off the sticks as well as they do on the sticks with the high-level competition. So these guys are going, you know, at it, you know, five, six days a week, and then they go out and they'll travel. So right now they're in Washington, D.C., uh, competing in a tournament. And so this tournament will get them a playoff spot. So they're scrimmaging there. They're, they, they actually they won a game last night. They, they won their series last night against the Memphis Grizzlies. So now they're, boom, they're in another competition going up against another team. So now they kind of have a little bit of high, and they're trying to continue to keep that momentum going. But all that starts in the offseason before they even get to competition, building the relationship, getting to know one another. Because one thing I didn't mention is every year – each team is only allowed to keep two uh, to three of their players. If they keep a third, they have to forfeit a draft pick. So every year, we're bringing in new talent to Dallas. And so that's one thing where it's sometimes hard to actually build a foundation in comparison to the Dallas Mavericks where you know Luka and we pretty much have our core team and you may have a few moves that you make in the offseason. But for us, it's literally every year we have to draft at least three to four new players every year. So it's high turnover, it's short periods, but we try to make sure that we're making the most and the players do a great job and the coaches do a great job of just making the most of what, they're, what they have in the moment and the time that they have them. That's awesome. How many people are familiar with the Dallas Mavericks? Okay, everybody. <laughs> Talk about what was one of those decisions? Like what was the decision for a pro organization like Dallas Mavericks to be, want to be a part of eSports? Do you know like, Kind of get from your perspective, why did they make that decision? 
Yeah, so I think it coincides with why you guys and gals are actually here today. So when I was working for the San Francisco 49ers as a sales consultant of stadium experiences back in 2016, 2017, I came back to start working for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, they had just opened up the stadium club uh, restaurant, and so I was responsible for uh, booking it out and doing special events and private dining experience in the space. But when I got back, there was a change that had taken place. Jerry Jones had, put, had just put about $500 million into complexity gaming. And then the owner of the Texas Rangers started investing in building where you guys are standing today. And then Mark Cuban and Take-Two Interactive and, and 17 other NBA owners decided, hey, we're going to invest in the NBA 2K League. So for me, it was like I didn't necessarily know what was going on in esports, but I knew that all these billionaires are making some decisions in this space, and I know for a fact they're not picking up a controller. I know for a fact they're not on a PC gaming. I know for a fact they're just, they know something though. They, they've got a bug about something. And so for me, it was a niche to say, okay, if a lot of these successful entrepreneurs and, and, and professional sports owners are getting behind esports and gaming, I don't know where I'm gonna fit into this niche, but I need to find it quickly. And, and it's kind of led me, when I got to the Mavericks, I got in ticket sales and I was just selling tickets. And now I find out that Mark Cuban is getting into the NBA 2K League. I played 2K in my personal time. So I used my success as in the company, and then I used the knowledge and the skills that I had in NBA 2K, and I meshed them together and just said, hey, guys, whatever you guys need in this thing y'all are doing in esports, just let me know. And it led to me writing the first three, you know, I essentially sat down with our human resources department and wrote down job descriptions for the jobs that I actually <laughs> wanted. But that's business and entrepreneurship. You have to be willing to actually create the dream that you already have envisioned within yourself, and then you have to kind of come up with a master plan but then you also have to be making sure that you're putting in some type of work because Jerry started with investing in complexity, but now he's turned the whole brand around and has made it niche to what he already cares about. And now he's investing into growing the brand. The same thing with Esports Stadium and Arlington and what they're doing to continue to open up new opportunities for Danny and, and you guys are coming in and partnering in this space because they see the vision in entrepreneurship. So that's that. That's my spill on that one. I love it. Awesome. All right. So, you know, back on the life as a pro athlete. You know, talk about does pro athletes in this instance that play 2K, do they only play 2K or do they play other games in their free time? Uh, kind of talk about, you know, the type of requirements that are needed. Do, are you guys like you only can play 2K and that's all you need to play? Or are you more so like, you know, use something in another game as like more of a, a release or such? Yeah. What is that like? So what's pretty interesting is um, with the NBA 2K League, these guys don't, and gals, they don't actually play on the retail version of the game. They actually have a league build that gives um, set measurements on each position. So point guard, shooting guard, small force, power force centers. When you're playing on the retail version, you can create what they like to call OP builds. Builds that like six, nine point guards that can do some crazy stuff. But when you get to the NBA 2K League, they have to kind of level the playing field and keep the measurements kind of similar in comparison to what you would see in the NBA. So there are height measurements, weight measurements, um, and then skill uh, thresholds based on the archetypes uh, that kind of keep a, a, an, uh, an even playing field, which that's how you know these are the best of the best because they're not even able to play with what they would consider to be their most OP builds. So for them, they actually, when they're actually in the league, they don't play the retail version of NBA 2K as much because it can throw off their trajectories because it's completely different. So they will play Call of Duty. They'll play Minecraft. They'll play a little bit of Roblox. They'll play um, Apex Legends. They'll play a little bit of Rocket League. They'll diversify their portfolio in other games, even if they're not necessarily an expertise in it. It just gives them an opportunity to step into something else that doesn't take away from what they're already doing with the league bills. Yeah. Awesome. So how important is content creating? for an organization, an esports organization, and also for your personal brand. Yeah. Like we're talking to individuals in the business, uh, business and they're looking at it from an entrepreneurship perspective. How important is your personal brand as well as your organization's brand from a content perspective? You know, I think that's very important because, especially when it came to me doing community and corporate social responsibility work here, the goal was for me to figure out how can I organically build impact in the city that I'm in. And so over the last two years, uh, we've created roughly 60 different community programs and initiatives, and at least 40 of them 
have been captured. We've created content that we've been able to do photo recaps, video recaps, being on Twitch streams, uh, doing live broadcasts like we did with Black to Esports, where we were able to address the lack of diversity, equity, and, and inclusion for minorities, uh, men and women in gaming. You know, the only way you tell the story is if you're willing to tell it, and you have to have the right type of team to help you tell that story. So for us, we make sure it's like, you know, we don't like to do community photogram. You know, that's not what this is about. We want to let our local community know that, hey, we are actually here. And if there's anything that we can do to service what you're looking for, or what you're seeking in this space, let us be an ally. But the only way I can actually tell you that, because think about it, esports is a space where any, you got a lot of people that come in this space and talk. Everybody has a, they're doing something in esports. So it's like, okay, but when it comes to community, I wanted to make sure people recognize, like, no, we're actually in the community. We're actually educating people. We're actually collaborating and partnering. But the only way that was possible is by us being able to create content and creating con purposeful content. Whenever we do videos, my job isn't to say, hey, this is mass gaming and this is what we, 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 we. No, we're going to the Danny Martins of the world and saying, Danny, tell us, what are we actually doing here today? You know, the Dallas Hypercrap, what are we actually doing here today? Uh, a Wounded Warriors Project, what are we doing here today? Because if we allow them to tell the story, then they truly see that there is a collaboration and a partnership and a purpose behind why we're actually trying to serve. This community is a lot of you guys, and so you guys are the next generation, and you guys live on the internet. So if you're consuming a lot of different things. So I was like, you know what, if we can just add some of this to what you're already looking at, hopefully it can continue to inspire you to want to be able to capture what you're doing and share it in a more positive light. What could scholars do right now to help support their communities in regards to not even just esports and gaming, but any industry? What can they be doing right now in high school to help add value to their local community? Using esports, technology, and gaming as a bridge to have more important dialogues and conversations. Um, we have such a distinct divide right now between our elder generation, the middle generation, and the future generation. And it's because there's been a lack of connectivity in our societies. So what you guys can do, we just did a program at Texas Wesleyan University a couple of weeks ago. I essentially sat down with their college students and I tasked and challenged them alongside with Eugene Fryer for them to create an on-campus esports community program for their college students. And they were able to get their business law students, their, their uh, theater students, their uh, um, business management students to actually come into a space and play video games together. And all of, none of them had any similarities. So you guys have to start using gaming and technology just as a bridge to start bringing all of your campus communities together so that way you guys can start addressing the things that are important to you because what you guys, how you see the future is totally different from how we see the future because we may be looking at metrics that tell us, okay, in the next three to five years, X, Y, and Z may happen. You guys are living in the current reality that we're trying to create, but you may have a totally different perspective. So why not start coming together and bridging those communities together because you guys are gonna be responsible for what the next five to 10 years are gonna look like for the generation behind you. So you guys have to start having those conversations now and don't let any generation above you say, oh, well, you guys shouldn't be have, don't worry about that right now. No, you should be worrying about it. If it's on your mind, then it needs to be addressed and you need to start bringing the bodies and communities together to be able to have those healthy conversations. Awesome, so let's talk about the pro athlete supportive roles at Mavs Gaming. All of the roles that are behind the scenes that you know typically are not talked about, but are very cool in their own right. Talk about those roles as well as talk about you know the aspect of a pro gamer going into the supportive roles like someone like Dave Fry. Absolutely. So um, I did a program, or well, I collaborated a few months back. We did a, um, an all girls initiative. Um, and in this initiative, we had a group of the girls that came to the table and I asked them, I said, show of hands, how many of you actually play video games? Out of the 100%, about 20% of the girls lifted their hands. How and many in this crowd right now play video games? With a show of hands. Again, about 90%, 99%. It was less than that. The le it was less hands than that of these young girls that, that, that raised. And so then I said, okay, how many of you like to argue? And a lot of the girls just kind of started putting their hands up and I said, those are esports attorneys. I said, how many of you like to write and capture content? I said, that's communication and journalism. I said, how many of you like to actually storytell? I said, boom, that's content creation on a, on a live virtual platform. I said, how many of you like money and business? That's entrepreneurship. So I said, if you got 20% of these young girls that actually like to game, 
and you have 80% that are in business and economics of some sort, why not put the 80% together with the 20% so you have 100%? Because if the boys don't want to let you at the table, then guess what? You can go and create your own table, and you can continue to build your own organic communities where people will want to cleave to your table. So esports and business is the exact same way. Myself, I'm just a corporate social responsibility manager, so my job is to make sure that I'm creating programs that raise awareness in our communities socioeconomically. But we have coaches, we have pro gamers, we have vice presidents in business development, we have corporate sponsorship, we have marketing, we have graphic design, we have photography, we have cinema, uh, uh, cinematography, uh, I think video videography. Um, we have people who are behind the scenes uh, that are doing administrative work. We have finance and legal. So there are careers in this space, and so don't look at gaming just as playing the video game. Look at gaming as entrepreneurship, and you guys have way more leverage than any of us could have ever imagined in the space. You already think you know everything because you can go to Google the moment you feel like you got an answer, or if you're or struggling, chat, chat GPT, <laughs> chat, chat, chat GPT. So you know the thing is, is that in this space, there's still a human concept to it, careers and gaming. So to the question, to go back to your second question, so we have two coaches. Our two coaches, one of them, his name is uh, Ryan Conger. He goes by Day Fry. Day Fry, we drafted Day Fry back in 2018 uh, with Mavs Gaming. He went and we traded him after season one. He goes to the Washington Wizards, wins back-to-back -back NBA 2K League championships. He is now our head coach, and he was able to take the earnings that he got from winning those tournaments, and now he's starting and built his own uh, food truck. And our other coach, Bobby Jones, based off, he's, uh, he grew up in Waxahachie, south of Dallas. So South Dallas. So this is an individual who grew up in your same territories yep. as being able to excel in the industry of esports and now is giving back to his community. Yeah. And what's the craziest thing about Day Fry is Day Fry was going into Danny's old facility called Geek Leaks uh, when he was opening up the doors for, uh, uh, for a lot of the uh, pro local gamers who were trying to get drafted or get notarized, he was opening up his doors and letting these guys come into his space. And so that's the coolest thing about how this thing works. Entrepreneurship is based upon connectivity because you can have a skill, but if you don't know how to market that skill, then you need somebody to help you market that skill so you both can maximize the value. So now we have two coaches on our staff who were former pro gamers. And so one of the things I asked him, I said, what was been the, like, what's been the hardest transition from being you know, a pro gamer to now being a coach? And the one thing that they said is the fact that we just can't go in and play when we want to play. And so now they have to go back to the X's and O's. They, they're now like, okay, we're teachers because they realize that their calling and their purpose is no longer about being the pro gamer. It's about setting up the next generation of gamers to step into the same position that they're in now casting the wide net. So in this thing called esports and gaming, I came in with a traditional sports sales background, but I had a passion for gaming and I was able to merge the two and my passion for entrepreneurship. But guess what? The most important thing I learned about entrepreneurship, it wasn't about my skills. It was about the people that I could lean on and come to and say, hey, I need to do this or I need help figuring this out. Can we work together and partner on this? And that's essentially what you guys are here for today partnering together to create a business plan that will create a better socioeconomic opportunity for you, your families, and the generations behind you. It's the same thing that applies in this space. So we see colleges now that are developing esports programs in droves right now. Talk about why you think that's happening right now and talk about the skill sets that are transferable to industries that are looking to recruit talent to work for their actual organization. Man, that's a good question because I just came, I literally just drove here from Longview. Uh, Longview uh, ISD was doing something in East Texas, and so I was out there spending some time with them, and so some representatives from Microsoft, uh, they got asked a question from one of the, uh, the panel, like the parents in the uh, stance, and they say, well, you know, I went to college, and I went and accumulated $90,000 of debt, but I got this degree, whereas my, my brother, he went and learned Python on his own, and now he's making $292,000 a year doing this without any debt. And so what do you tell a person who's struggling, you know, who, who may not believe that college is the answer? I said, well, to me, I look at it like this. It's important for colleges to start promoting esports. Why? Because the next generation is invested in it, for one. The second thing is, is you guys have to realize that college is necessary for you to understand how can you be a leader in the next society. 
the people that you go to college with are going to be in the next generation of working class America. So the same way when a lot of guys, uh, only a few guys will make it D1 and they'll go to this prestigious university and a few of them are lottery picks. A few of them have to go and they compete for four years. A few of them may have an opportunity to go overseas. A few of them may have an opportunity to maybe get into coaching or team management because they may want to be an athletic director. So when you go to college, it gives you an opportunity to kind of build a pathway of the human that you want to be while pursuing a degree. So that's why I believe that if you care about gaming and you like gaming and you want to pursue gaming in any level, consider college in, as an opportunity to not only get a degree, because you need to have credible skills for the world. Because you may, you know, I, you know, we all grew up and we all believed that, you know, I wanted to run track and field. So as a track and field athlete, my goal was to, to, to try to run a 44 second 400 meter dash because I believe if I ran a 44 second 100, uh, 400 meter dash, that would give me an opportunity to get signed by Nike, Adidas, Puma, one of the prestigious program, uh, uh, teams and brands, and then boom, guess what? Now I may have an opportunity to go run in the world championships and make it to the Olympics. By the time I got to my junior year, I realized quickly that I peaked. I realized that there was a threshold that I could only go. So that means, okay, it doesn't mean that I didn't care. I, I carried this because this was an opportunity for me to be the first person in my family to graduate with a college degree. So I had a purpose behind why I was doing this, but I realized quickly reality was setting in. So when you get to college, you're going to go through a lot of changes because you've now become a young adult with a little bit of freedom. And so while you're chasing your passion in your career, you, there may be a different calling that hits you in the midst of that. And the only way you find that out is by being around other students. So that way you can have opportunities to mess up and make mistakes and it not be held against you for the rest of your life for one. Because if you continue to pursue just saying, okay, fresh out, some people are called and gifted to be able to say, I'm mastering Python and I don't need college and I already got it figured out and I'm just gonna continue to work through YouTube University to figure the rest of this stuff out. Others may need a little bit of time. So it's really individually based on who you are and what you know about yourself. If you know that I have the capabilities to do this on your own, then don't let anything stop you. But if you do truly know you need a little bit of time, make sure you exercise that time and use it wisely, but also make sure you're prioritizing networking, building relationships with the people that are on your campus because you may get sparks of inspiration that may help you along the journey and you may have needed that time to kind of figure some of that stuff out. That's really awesome. I think one of the things I, I really want to be able to harp on is the fact that, you know, for me in college, it was the networking. One of the best opportunities I received in college being in you guys' shoes was having an educator, a professor that really cared enough to know that I'm passionate about business enough to make the connection to someone else in another industry. And one of the biggest things I take away of the reason I love the college that I went to, University of Texas at San Antonio, is the people I met that I still talk to today. It's the networking that really was important when it came down to, I already had a passion of gaming and esports, but really being able to find individuals that can you know, pour information into you to help you be that much more successful um, at the passions that you already have. It's the networking that really became prime in regards to the development. So think about that when you're going either into college, when you're going and working in the workforce, think about the actual relationships that you have with individuals because they truly, truly matter. Being a good human is, is, is it's needed these days, right? And you never know, still I talk to individuals that I've been engaging with for years and years today because we kept a really good relationship and that really matters because things change, life changes and you never know, you know, Trey can tomorrow announce that he's working for, you know, or created his own company with NHL. He will bring those same connections, that same insight even more, and that's something that I, I can learn from that actual transition and we can build relationships off of that. You're gonna experience the same. You're seeing individuals right now in your seat, two years or 10 years from now, individuals can be doing something totally different, but you're still connected with them and you still can get that insight from them and grow your professional brand or your actual expertise in something that may be completely different in another industry. You never even know. Drake can, you know, he can start selling or creating multi-million dollar houses. And at the end of them, I'm like, I know somebody to create multi-million dollar houses now, you know? That's what's going to transpire. And then smile about it. And then smile about it. <laughs> <laughs> because the goal is to see everybody successful. When you have a heart posture built on networking, building meaningful relationships, you want to see the person right next to you succeed. I have never wanted to see anybody fail in life because I understand we all have hardships. I understand we all have life's journeys and we all have stories. Even you all as young teenagers and young adults, you all have
have a story. And so that's why when we talk about community, you can't have community without unity because unity is built on togetherness. Togetherness is built on understanding. Understanding creates perspective. Pers perspective creates respect. Because when you understand that we all have a perspective based on our life circumstances, then we learn to respect one another. And when you have respect for somebody, that means you have regard for their life. You have regard for what they want to accomplish and what they want to do. And that's how Danny and I, like, it's respect. It's genuine love and it's respect because regardless, I want to see him be the best version of himself. And I know he wants the exact same thing for me. And I know he wants the exact same thing for all of you here or else he's pouring everything in his heart and his soul into his work. And it's evident when you see the attention to detail, when you see the productions, when you see the intentionality, when you see the real work, you can see somebody's heart. So make sure that you're focusing on being the best version of yourself, but just prioritize having that unity and connectedness because you truly will build lifelong relationships if that is your priority, more so than conditional happiness. I'm only happy with you if you're doing something for me. Transactional relationships, they only, they, they don't, they only go so far because after a while, if somebody isn't doing something that's in alignment with you, what are you going to do? <coughs> you're probably going to nix them. So it's best to have that, that heart posture built on seeing the best for somebody because if they go a different pathway, at least you can say, I knew them and I'm happy for them. Awesome. Last question before a panel, uh, before, before uh, questions from you guys and ladies out there. This is real, right? So yeah. we all come across challenges and hardships. Yeah. I know where you grew up. Yeah. We grew up in the south, south part of Dallas. A lot of the students here grew up in the south part of Dallas or growing up in the south part of Dallas. Talk about some of the challenges that you face in high school, in college, or just growing up in, south, in the south part of Dallas that has actually helped you in your life today. Yeah. Talk about some of those challenges that you were like, man, this is hard. You know, I sometimes may want to just check out or I just, nobody just will understand my trials and tribulations. Now that you're here working and adding value in the community with Dallas Mavericks, talk about how you've actually taken some of those challenges or experienced those challenges and now they're some of your best assets. I'm going to say this very clearly. Do not let culture define who you are. Culture will kill your individuality quick. And you guys have high dopamines because of the accessibility to technology. The one thing that I, I couldn't always go with the crowd because I knew that I was different. I may have liked certain things about the culture, just like we all do, but I never let the culture define who I was. Because at the end of the day, we all stand equal in the eyes of God. And if we all stand equal, then guess what? That means we all have a purpose, and that purpose is valued by somebody higher than us. And so if you continue to play into the hands of culture, the hands of stereotypes, the hands of comparison, the hands of racial separation, if you don't learn how to love everybody now, you're going to struggle learning them later, loving them later. And so culture tells you to separate when I'm telling you no. It, we need to do the complete opposite. Togetherness is the key. Looking at everybody, regardless of what the skin complexion or tone, no, look at people's heart posture. If you focus on the heart, then you know everything you need to know about the individual. Man, woman, child, young girl, young adults, teenagers. You have to see people for who they are, but if you look into culture for your answers, then you're going to always be lost in the sauce. So you have to make sure that you're prioritizing knowing who you are, being okay and comfortable with who you are, not being afraid to express who you are. And if somebody can't accept you for who you are, wish them well and continue to be who you are. Don't let nobody tell you what you can do, what you can be, who you are. It doesn't matter. That's an opinion. Opinions don't cut checks. Opinions don't give you degrees. Opinions are subjective. They mean nothing. The heart posture will tell you everything. So don't fall victim to culture. Stay true to who you are. Learn to love who you are so then you can truly learn how to love others. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for that, man. <laughs> awesome. All right. So does anybody out there have any questions before we wrap it up? I'm anxious to see any questions that anybody may have. You have a question? All right. So let me see. I may not can get this. It may be too short. Hi, I'm Emily, and I want to ask you, what's your life motto? What's my life motto? Yeah. Um, so my life motto, so I'm a father, I'm a husband, 
Uh, I'm a Christian, so I serve and follow my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he gives me the tools that I need to be able to just make the best choices that I can. And if I make mistakes, it's okay, because I know that he will give me the answers that I need. And so for me, it's I've learned that I have a lot of aspirations and things that I want to accomplish in life, but I'm okay with forfeiting, like forfeiting them all to find the purpose that I've been called to do here in life. So my life model is to continue to trust in him with all of my heart and not always rely on my, understand, my own understanding. And if I know him, I know he'll make my path straight. So it helps me because I have a lot on, I'll have a lot on my plate. I'm an entrepreneur, community relations. I'm a friend. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I have my own you know, business endeavors. So it's as a human, as a person, it's hard for me to find balance in that all the time. So I have to have some type of structure and resources. And so Christ gives me what I need. I trust in that. And even when I don't have understanding, I just continue to seek. And, you know, I understand that sometimes hardships may come with that journey, but I'm okay with it because at the end of the day, I'm peaceful with knowing that I'm following in accordance with what my purpose is in life. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Any other questions? Hi, I'm Kimora. Hello. Um, my question is, was there any moment in life or like work or school where you struggled and how did you handle that? Um, I had quite a few. Um, I was a true freshman, so I, I had four, like I was competing from the moment I stepped on campus and so I struggled because with the campus life, it's you got parties, you got all this stuff that's going on, so you're kind of controlling your own schedule. So my grades were kind of fluctuating a little bit, and, and I was having a hard time staying focused because I had too many outside distractions. But, you know, when you're studying business management, business management is teaching you accounting, it's teaching you finance, it's teaching you international business, it's teaching you logistics, it's teaching you macro and micro management. And so I started learning that in some of these areas I'm not strong, <laughs> and in some of these areas I actually feel really good. And I kind of had to start, you know, working the system a little bit, but it started with, I had to start prioritizing, you know, your tr I got track practice, I know I have track practice, but if I know I got a 10 page paper to write, I better get my butt in this library and find somebody I know that can actually help me. So some of my challenges, I didn't let them defeat me. I said, I'm going to find a way. And in this life, you have to start, you have to find a way. And the earlier you start figuring out, okay, if I don't have the answer, I need to find somebody that has the answer, especially if you need the answer. Don't sit and sulk and wait for somebody and think somebody's just gonna hand it to you. I had to kind of, you know, put in a little bit of legwork. Some, some courses I had to go through the mud. And, but you know what, they made me so much stronger because it gave me an appreciation for the others who actually had that gift. And that's when you start to realize like, wow, people actually do have callings in certain things. Some people are actually meant to be doctors. Some people are meant to be lawyers. Some people are meant to work in logistics and imports and exports because they understand numbers and how things operate. So, you know, the hardships were challenging, but I never let the challenges defeat me. I just kept my head up high. I stayed confident and optimistic because if I didn't know the way, I was confident to know I would at least find the way. Thank you. Absolutely. Anybody else? Yeah, come. There's no such thing as a bad question. There's no such thing this as is a bad. So in, this is a sow and seed situation. And we have like five, maybe like seven more minutes. So if you have a question, please. Uh, hi, my name's Kamily. And Hello. I wanted to ask you, you know when you're in high school and you don't really know what you want to do with like your career or what do you want to study? When did you know what did, when did you know what you wanted to study? Or Man, um, I actually learned it later in life. And so I'll express it with you guys. Um, we had a leadership um like a leadership session in my department and they made me do this thing called the Clifton Strengths Finder assessment. And I would highly encourage you guys if you have the means to do it, to do it because what it did was it taught me how to be a leader as I am. You have some individuals that are introverted and they may not be as comfortable expressing themselves and you have some people like myself who are extremely extroverted and sometimes I overly share. But I had to figure out how am I meant to be a leader and what type of roles and positions can I be successful in thriving in that. So I would encourage you right now in everything that you know about yourself, start writing down the things that you like. Start writing down the things that you're passionate about. Write down the things that you're not passionate about and the things that you may not like. And then start doing research based on careers that align with some of those things. And hopefully it will spark some inspiration that will allow you to start going down a rabbit hole journey. And then 
I would encourage you to start looking up individuals who are working in those spaces. Find some seminars, find some YouTube videos, um, and continue to also ask people around you. If you see people that are similar and say, okay, I see you like this, I like this, is there an opportunity for us to maybe collaborate or share ideas and thoughts? And then for people who are on the opposition, where you may need one of those resources in order to help you with what you're doing, start leveraging those opportunities and starting to kind of expand yourself out there. So if you are more shy and together, like into yourself, once you start building that circle, then that circle can truly see the beauty that you already have within you because you've now, they've kind of come into a space that you're comfortable in and now you feel comfortable expressing who you truly are. But it starts with self-identification. So just be honest with yourself and start asking yourself, what do I actually want to do in life? And then start trying to do the research and the homework to pursue that. Thank you. Anybody else? Awesome. So everybody give an awesome round of applause for Trey today, sharing those gems. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Thank you. And we have, um, I've been supremely anxious for this business plan competition because um, if you don't know, these individuals, and we're going to have a short break, but these individuals have spent, like I stated, three weeks building out these business plan competition, uh, business plans for this competition. So this is really, really going to be good to be able to see all the way through. Um, but most importantly, we're going to start at 6 o'clock. We have around about 12 minutes. We're going to take a short break, um, but definitely come back at round at 6 o'clock because we're going to start. But thank you all so much for this opportunity. Oh, one second, one second. All right, so I have Meet Gaming, Ignite, and Dev. So if you are here as part of the business competition and you are not part of one of those three groups, please come see me so I can check you in. When you all present, please use this time just to kind of make sure you all are on the same accord. Make sure that when you are speaking, you are very, um, you know, you're speaking loud enough. You see we do have a lot going on in the building today. Uh, you think about who's going to speak at what time that you are making contact with the audience as far as eye contact. Um, and outside of that, let's go. Awesome. So we're going to start at 6 o'clock, so a small break, get prepped, and then we'll shall, we shall should begin. And so I will also, Brittany, let them know who's going to go first and second and third, but once they come back, you know it? No. Presentations are, I believe, in the order I just stated, so it's going to be Meet, Dev, Ignite. <laughs> All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, so we're going to start now. So we now have approached our eSports business plan pitch competitions. Currently right now, with eSports, we've worked with an independent school district by the name of Dallas ISD. And these students have worked for about three weeks as they've built their eSports organization. And their first task was to create an eSports tournament. So they've been given a fictitious budget. And from there, they have to be able to plan a tournament and show, showcase the outcome of the actual tournament. So we want you to be a supporter of them as they pitch. Uh, these students are marketing and business, business students, right? All right, of Townview High School. So it's going to be pretty cool to get this experience to be able to pitch. So uh, we're going to hope that individuals in the crowd can support as well as ask questions or such. Uh, but this, I'm sure this is like a nerve-wracking time for the high school students. Uh, but it's so beneficial when it comes down to building skills and working in the industry, especially esports and gaming. So for the first team, can we get Meet Gaming to come up? Woo! No pressure. <laughs> Y'all got it. All right, so y'all can use both of the mics. All right, so we are Meet Gaming. 
And this is our Me Mania contender, Contenders series. And we are here to offer opportunities for those that have hidden talent, are, are in the shadows, and that want to bring their talent into the real, real world to be able to gain more opportunities for the real world. Um, for the real world and to be, uh, to be able to gain more opportunities to, oh, my bad, <clears throat> to be able to gain more benefits into what they could really do and that's pretty much it. And So these are our team members. Uh, I'm Julian Trevino, and I'm the writer and designer of the group. I'm Kamo Davis, and I'm in charge of head of technology. I'm JB Hernandez. I am the general manager. I am Will Diatley, and I'm the social media manager. I am uh, Jacob Lopez, and I am the art leader. I'm Carlos Rojo, and I'm the head of public relations. My name is Mark Chiracosian, and I am the head of the financial analyst group. Our featured games will be Fortnite, Rock League, FIFA 23, and Warzone. And we chose these games to be able to give players a, a better competitive exposure to better to really show what they could really do in these type of games and to make it more diverse to what's saying Fortnite. There's people like all different audiences that are into Fortnite and with Rocket League, other people are also into Rocket League due to the physics-based type of game it is. And then FIFA 23, since people are into sports like athletics, they want to use that knowledge to be able to put it into gaming. And then with Warzone, people are into um, games like Battle Royale, like Fortnite. And all right, so the prizes and rewards so for each game, uh, the first place winner will receive $10,000 along with a trophy and a certificate of achievement. And for a runner-up, they'll also they will receive $5,000. And for the registered gamers, uh, the rest that didn't win, they will be entered into a, um, a draft or a lottery. And it will be given um, prizes such as merchandise, uh, gaming equipment. Also for management, the uh, location selection, we have chosen the eSports uh, Arena in Arlington. Uh, the event we run from 8 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Um, the registration fee will be about $55, giving us a very uh, large profit. Um, and also technicians and uh, emergency safeguards will be on the location site to have any breakdowns or mishaps. So how the tournament works, Fortnite and Call of Duty will be uh, points-based uh, games where placement, elimination, and wins will uh, points be awarded for, those, awarded for those. And with FIFA and Rocket League, there'll be, uh, also be points awarded but for different um, achievements. Okay. So here is our registration information and deadlines. So registration fee, uh, this will be for gamers who are chosen for their popularity and their resumes, and they will pay uh, $55 to register for this uh, Meet Mania con Contender Series. And this will get them a lot more uh, notoriety in the gaming scene. This will give uh, them a lot of leverage to enter into the esports uh, community. Uh, the deadline for registration is on July 2nd at uh, 2023 at 11.59 p.m. Uh, after this date, no more registrations. Uh, so next is our marketing. So this is eSports, so obviously most of our marketing is going to be going on online. Uh, multiple social media platforms such as Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, uh, uh, et cetera. Uh, so we have uh, Arby's as our primary sponsor. Uh, they are, you know, the, we have the meets uh, coinciding with our brand, Meat Gaming. Uh, then we have Logitech and G Fuel as our secondary sponsors. And so uh, flyers and other promotional materials will be distributed through email uh, just to get our name out there, try to get as many gamers, as many pros as possible. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so this event will be a 12-hour event. First off, we're starting with our orientation, which is 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. And then uh, setting up will be 8.30 to 9. And then the rest of the, the, competi the event will be starting with Rocket League and then break throughout the whole event, then Fortnite, then FIFA, then Warzone. Then, of course, breaks, making sure the players do not um, get tired or overloaded with all the competition gaming. And then extra time if, if needed, because, you know, games might, might go over overtime. And then award ceremony to announce the winners. Our production team is in charge of executing our live broadcast across our production team is in charge of executing our live broadcast across Me Gaming social, uh, social media channels. We will be streaming the event live on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok for anyone who wants to watch at home. Uh, our production team is ready on standby in case any malfunction happens and they're ready to fix it. Um, every game and the players will be broadcasted on a giant 4K TV. To make sure uh, to make sure everyone in the audience can enjoy the event, the public the public relations team is in charge of of upholding um, meet gaming social media pr uh, presence. Uh, will they were in charge of choosing uh, meet gaming's sponsors and making sure that they fit with meet gaming's mission. At the end of the event. They will meet with the investors again uh, to make sure that the event went as planned and how the investors liked it. So the technology team is going to work closely with the production team to make sure they have the uh, proper audio and visual video equipment that they need um, and also to produce um, quality audio and video content. So we have three different tiers of sponsorship. Um, gold, platinum, and diamond. Um, the diamond is investing fifty thousand. Um, platinum is twenty thousand, and gold is five thousand. Um, Arby's, as Will stated earlier, is our um, main investor, and since they're our main investor, they're going to be getting a ten percent ROI. And then our platinum is uh, our second uh, secondary investor, and they're going to be getting a five percent ROI. So for our Meat Gaming merchandise, so our hoodies go for $45, and our t-shirts go for $25, and our hats go for $5. So we're going to be on uh, live on basically almost every main main uh, streaming platform like Twitch and YouTube. Uh, if you choose to join, yeah. Uh, we can hear the, like, the drone of competition, upcoming tournaments. This is, uh, the main uh, point of this operation is to make sure it's long-lasting, it's longevity. And we want that to be a main part of our foundation and our structure of our uh, company. Um, that's why we want this to be a, a foundation, a pilot for future events. We want this to be a big thing. So we, that's why we have learned more and other operations just like this. So as, as a financial analyst, the main part of my job is to, is to structure our, our, um, our, con our thing. Like, um, sorry, my bad. Like the stage crew, the audi uh, audio production, our security, and also we have to in charge of commentators such as we have people like uh, Courage, Cubby, and Space Ghost. Um, Esports tournaments generally don't make enough revenue, so it's m my job to uh, make this profitable, as profitable as possible. Uh, that means uh, handling the expenses, revenue, and most importantly, the profit. Uh, so our venue is going to be $13,000, and our prize pool uh, cons uh, for the three-day uh, tournament is going to be $40,000. Staffing is going to cost about eighteen thousand six hundred, with conce concessions costing fifteen thousand dollars, with our total expenses being eighty six thousand six hundred dollars, and with the regi the registration fee alone, we've generated about two hundred seventy five thousand dollars. The ticket sales being seventy thousand uh, seventy thousand dollars, two thousand tickets sold in total. Uh, concession profits being thirty thousand. Most people want to eat after the during breaks. That's why we have a lot of break times in our schedule. Uh, the membership we do have a membership, and our merchandise alone seventeen thousand six hundred. Uh, so in total, we have uh, our sponsors cover 87% of our pa of our expenses, which is which leaves us with $11,258 out of pocket for us, and most importantly, the profit. 
Is this profitable? Yes, we generate about $339,060. Thank you so much for taking time. Does anybody have any questions for them? I got the first question. Talk about, you speak on return on investment for the actual, uh, for the uh, sponsors and partners. Talk about some of those KPIs that you're going to provide to the actual sponsor. What are those sponsors looking at if they're going to give you that amount of capital? What are they looking for? So uh, Arby's being our main sponsor, they want, we wanted to give them as, as much as incentives as possible for them to sponsor us. We provide banners, we provide advertisement, concession stands. We uh, the commentators will talk about their, their food a lot. And our, the main thing with our, our, our diamond package is Arby's will have uh, a lot of concession stands around the, around the event. So they can, uh, the people who on, on their breaks, because we have a lot of breaks in our schedule, we want them to go out and eat after. Um, so the return is a lot of advertising we provide and also um, future investments and partnerships we, we come up with Arby's itself. So to answer your question, uh, it's all about the packages and what they give us and the incentives we provide to them too. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll stay on the uh, KPI uh, question because um, you have three different packages and three different sponsors. And so you're looking to get a lot of revenue, but there's only so many assets that you can give in the space. So how will you ensure that your uh, gold and your, uh, and your platinum partners get the same amount of ROI back, even though they've spent less money? You said, uh, could you ask the last part of your question again? How will you ensure that your other partners outside of the key title sponsor, Arby's, how will you ensure that they also get ROI, even though they're spending less money? Um, so... As uh, the platinum, they get 5% back, and then the diamond, they get 10% back. Um, and they get, we give 5% to um, Logitech because they don't provide as much cash uh, in their investment. And they get 15 second ad time uh, compared to Arby's 30 second ad time. Will they have uh, vendors tables and live representatives to talk Lo about their products? They provide the uh, equipment that's going to be used during the um, during the competition. Nice. Awesome. What was the logic behind the name? Like, kind of talk about the story behind you guys' name. So, um, we were thinking about, we kind of just came out with it out of nowhere, and then... Um, Arby's, Arby's slogan came in there, uh, uh, like, we have the meats, so we were like, okay, we'll just put the two together, and we made meat gaming. Awesome, and then, awesome, um, next question would be, how, what are your plans, you're going to make X amount of profit, a little over 300000 what do you plan to do with that $300,000? Um, well, we would hope to reinvest it back into the company, uh, and hold future competitions that, uh, maybe have higher uh, prize pools and um, try to generate more, more money. Awesome. Well, I, was also gonna, I was also gonna say a lot of giving back to the community, uh, like I guess incentives wise and also kind of creating esports environments at several schools like we have at our school, uh, which we're doing now, which, yeah. Awesome, any other questions? I have one last one. If you had anybody in the world and y'all can take some time to think about this, but if you had anybody or any company in the world to invest in your company, who would that be? Or a company, person or a company? Well, I mean, if we're looking at any one person, uh, you know, I'd like to look at, you know, people on the richer side, so maybe <laughs> someone like, you know, Elon Musk. You can look at Jeff Bezos. You know, owners of those big, you know, hundred billion dollar companies. Uh, maybe Apple. Maybe Apple wants to sponsor us. You know, that'd be great. That's a trillion dollar company. So, uh, yeah, just those those larger, you know, value companies. And to jump on what Will said, we also want um, people who are already built in this foundation to sponsor us too. Mavs Gaming with Trey Thompson is pretty good too. And other esports convention centers too, like uh, Dallas Fuel is one of the one of the big ones too. We want them to partnership with them, and people who already already have a, like a footstep in the in the in the in the area as well too.
Awesome. Everybody give them a round of applause. Thank y'all so much. All right, so we can, we have the next team. Dev, come on up. All right, you can start when you're ready. So I am Dev Team, and so my introduction place right here. Like oh, keep it up, yeah. Is there? Yep. Okay. So for my team is Dev, and we're gonna do a tournament about Fortnite with 32 people from 32 colleges from Dallas, and it's gonna be a single elimination, being accessible to live or video, aiming and person and person too. Like in stadium. And so for my venue selection, we're going to have our staff call sheets and day rates for $50 per hour plus their five hour prep, which is going to make us a uh, pay of 5400 Plus we're going to have 10000 for the facility we're going to rent out which includes with the equipment we need, like PCs and um, PCs, consoles, monitors, and con uh, Xbox Playstations. For scheduling, we're gonna start it at 11, where it's gonna be prep time, and which at 1 a.m., I mean, I mean 1 p.m. is where the tournament is actually going to start. And during that 11 a.m., we're going to have our technicians, all of our staff in there, so they can be ready to have the tournament be uh, done by 1, which dur uh, during our time. And the event's going to end around 8 p.m. And participant registration, we're going to have the 32 different colleges, which is going to be invited by us, which are going to be the 32 top best colleges, esports colleges, in the Dallas. And so uh, it's going to be to um, we're going to advertise our uh, our tournament through TikTok. Instagram and Facebook and every, everywhere else, even promoting in billboards around the stadium. And we're gonna send um, personal emails to the co their two colleges, which they could actually invite their their single person who's gonna um, play for. Well, I guess in a way like. You got it. Which they're gonna be um, promoting their colleges logistics. Uh, so, how we're gonna get our um, 32 people over here is gonna be by bus, which we're gonna be rented out by us, and they could stay at their like hotels during the meantime, so could, they could be prepped. Pre um, prepared for the next day, which they're gonna come and play out for the tournament. Security, we're gonna have eight different securities. Well, I mean, eight people who's gonna be security for us, and, and they're gonna get paid thirty dollars per hour, which is nine hours, which is two thousand, two thousand. Um, 2160 dollars $2, for the whole day, which they're gonna be security for us. Communication. So for communication, for the security is gonna be walkie-talkies, which we're gonna provide for them. Which we're gonna buy two five sets of five walkie-talkies for them, which each set costs two hundred forty dollars, which the cost.
covers up to 1,200. Contingency planning. So we're going to plan out how we're going to handle unexpected events or emergencies when it happens in the um, tournament. Like if we need to call the ambulance or some fights going on, we could just get the security to help out. For marketing, uh, we're going to have a target audience, which is going to be a base amount of like gamers from all around Dallas, mostly because it's going to be located here in Arlington Esports Stadium. And the mostly the target audience is going to be people who's going to, who mostly going to play Fortnite or promotes and streams for Fortnite. For branding, it's going to be by our, um, by our logos and the marketing industries, by social media and stuff, and color schemes, imagery, and font. Promotional material is going to be by billboards, social media, and flyers, which could be located anywhere in Dallas or in Arlington. Par partnerships and sponsors is going to be, we're going to be sponsored by McDonald's, which they could provide us for the food and maybe the drinks included also. And also the ghost um, energy drink, which they could provide their products, like their energy drinks to our players, and which could be also sold in the um, tournament. Social media, which we're going to use TikTok, Instagram, Switch, I not switch. I mean Twitch and YouTube and other content uh, places to promote and boost our our, uh, our tournament. Press and media. Uh, we will reach out to the relevant media outlets, including gaming websites, bloggers, podcasts, and participating in the event commentaries and. Help the high-speed uh, ticket sales. So you could actually, uh, you could buy our tickets through the website or in person. So on website, you could also like pre-order the tickets, and also in person, which you could buy in the in the front desk. Our equipment for our operations and production is going to be mostly of PCs, monitors, laptop, um, Switch, PS4s, and anything else that our participants need for their tournament. Podcasting, we're going to be podcasting around in TikTok, not TikTok, I mean Twitch and YouTube, where we're going to podcast live the gaming tournament technical uh, technical support which we're going to have te uh, certified technicians technicians which they will help us prepare for the tournament beforehand so everything could run smoothly during the event graphics and animation we're going to have uh, people who know animation which they could help us with the podcast of the Twitch and YouTube to make it look way better, way cooler. Post event, post event, uh, we're gonna have a production team, which also includes the animation team, which helps the good quality of the podcast and the videos. The registration and the selection process. We're gonna have people who are from like the esports teams in the 32 different colleges that are in the top 32 in Dallas. Communication. For the schedule, we're going to have people around, I mean, uh, around 11, which are the staff and people who are important to like prepare the whole tournament. And around 1, a 1 p.m., we're going to have the tournament to start, and which the event ends around 9. 9 p.m. 
logistics. So uh, for logistics, we're gonna have the players meet up around the hotels where we have them stay at during the night before the tournament starts, which we're gonna pick them up in our bus, which we rented, so we could bring them in to the um, to the um, uh, stadium. Coaching and support. So we're gonna have personal coaches with them, which are their personal coaches that actually support them in their esports, which they're gonna help them out during the, the gameplay, new game, uh, yeah, ga game plans and everything else. Refereeing and dispute resolutions. So we're gonna have personal referees, which is gonna be mon montanary, ma mon man not <laughs> monitoring the um, eSports games each round to see who wins those games and which to follow up the next games, uh, next round. Play welfare, welfare. So we're gonna take certain breaks each round depending on how long the rounds are taking. So every player could have their own chance of rest like food, breaks, and everything. Financial economics. So the venue, we're gonna have the the eSports Stadium, which is located in Arlington, which is gonna cost us $10,000. Um, for the day, we're gonna be renting it out. Productions and equipment staff. So the production and staff will cost around 10000 5000 to $10,000, depending on how many hours and overtime we have to pay them. Team players. Since, um, since this whole event is going to be sponsored by McDonald's and Ghost Gaming, uh, Ghost, um, Ghost Energy Drink, uh, McDonald's is going to be responsible for the food, which wouldn't cost us anything, and the ghost esport, uh, ghost energy drinks. They're gonna provide us the drinks, like the energy drinks, food and beverages, which McDonald's is gonna provide that, and Ghost Gaming. But you know, on the side, we're also gonna provide our like cokes, drinks, etc., sodas, and snacks, and snacks. Prize pool is gonna be fifty thousand dollars for the winner for the top three. So fifty thousand, I mean twenty-five thousand for top one. Top two is gonna get fifteen thousand and ten thousand for the third. Marketing and promotions. Promotions could cost around six thousand dollars since we're gonna promote it through social medias and bill by billboards. Ticket sales. So each ticket is going to cost $40, uh, $40, which we're going to have 2,000 people attend in live in the stadium, while the rest is going to attend through Twitch and by live and YouTube also, which the amount is going to cost up to eight, uh, 80000 for the tickets and a hundred peop uh, hundred dollars for the people who's gonna participate in the tournament. Merchandise sales, we're gonna have sell our personal t-shirts, which each of them is gonna cost thirty dollars, but for the cost itself, it's gonna be eight for each. And our crowdfunding would be from people who's gonna support us, like donations and GoFundMe and other stuff, and grants. We're gonna have the Entertainment Software Association where they grant them, we're, we're gonna get a grant from them. And our, our ROI, Return of Investment, we're gonna have 600,000, 600,000, 41,600, 641,600 dollars per 
plus our sponsors, donations, and grants and crowdfunding, minus the 979, I mean 97,798 from our expense, which makes us a total of 7.1 or 7 or 7, 710%. Awesome, everybody give them a round of applause. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Was it tough? Huh? You got through it? Yeah. I love it. Um, the cool thing I want to say about this is that this individual's team worked with him, but quickly or like early on, they had they had the naturally other things to do. It was testing, um, you know, a lot of different elements that transpired. But he ultimately still decided to say, I want to get up on this stage and I want to present my company and still pull it through despite the hard, like despite how hard this is being the only person on the stage. So with that stated, your bravery is on a whole nother level for doing this. Thank you. So, so definitely commend yourself on that. I don't care what anybody else say in the world, the fact that you were able to do that shows that you are brave in itself and you can conquer anything that the world is pushing towards you. And that's, that's how you become successful in this world. So definitely, please be excited that you actually able to do this and push it through. All right, Thank so you. now for the tough questions, right? <laughs> awesome. Um, first question, um, kind of talk about your name. Like, how did the name come about? So Dev is my half, half of my name, so for Devin. But it's also my gaming name, which I actually use too. But it, the full name is going to be Dev Gam. Awesome. What did you learn through this process? What I learned? Hmm. Well, I just learned about just my own part, actually, financial, the economics part. But yeah, it was like in totality, like putting it together, like speaking in front of individuals, like the work that it took to build the website overall. Like what is something that you didn't expect that you that you ultimately learn and you're able to take away from this experience? Just confidence. That's it, really. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. You got a question? Double take what Danny said. C c kudos to you, brother. Like, you really did that, man. I, I salute you for all your confidence and your effort. Um, the question I have for you is, what was the inspiration behind just focusing on doing uh, one Fortnite tournament instead of having a few different genres of games to play? So, for Fortnite, we only chose Fortnite because everyone loves Fortnite. Yeah. Who doesn't, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, we just gone with Fortnite, and so, like, after every tournament is going to be done and our winner all of our winners get their prizes everyone can just chill afterwards I like that thank you awesome anybody have any questions let's get this guy a round of applause <laughs> good job all right last but not least we have Ignite Arena. <laughs> Let's go. Good job. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing today? Y'all good? I'm good, too. Well, since you might be wondering who we are, you might be wondering why we have these shirts on. Well, Introduce, to introduce us, we're Ignite Arena. Oh, and this is what we do at Ignite Arena. Ignite Arena is determined to have the aspects of gaming just incorporated in all your esports competition. We are looking for very passionate people and who are just very lively and full of life. We want to gather gamers and fans who have a love for esports together for an amazing experience. Gathering people together who share the same passion is a worthwhile investment. We want to invest to give the teams and the audience a great experience in esports. We want to ignite their wonderful memories. Our events will host a diverse body of gamers from all over the world. Dallas is a city of entertainment and amusement, and it's where we will host our Rocket League tournament in Duncanville at the Esports Stadium. Now that you know, now that you know about Ignite Arena, let's get to know us. First of all, I am the CMO, and you should already know, though, 
Anyway, on to the next. I'm Kamora Griffin, the CEO. Who's next? I'm Emily Che. I'm the COO. Who's next? I'm Gamily Puente, and I'm the CFO. Who's next? My name is Kyle Thickman, and I'm the CTO. So let's get right into it. And we're going to begin with marketing. <laughs> management, not marketing, management. So event management is very, very important for any event, especially eSports e event. So our event management team is in charge of the logistics, such as scheduling, uh, participation, and the venue selection. <laughs> Community is, uh, I mean, communication is an important part of any event, and we pride ourselves in it to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Now on to Kylan. For, for our tournament, we will be using a double elimination system, meaning that there will be a loser's bracket and, player, and teams will be able to play two games before being in, in taken out of the tournament. This will create more of, a, more of a competitive environment to where if a team makes a mistake on the first round, they get to come back on the second round with a more competitive attitude, with the more like, the more like I'm in this to win this now. Team management. We would not have this event if it wasn't for our team. So we pride ourselves in making sure they have the support they need and that they are determined to win. So first of all, we have we are giving them a hotel, food, and transportation. They get to come the day before the event, which the event runs from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And they get to stay there, and they get free transportation with a charter bus that we will pay for. And they get to have a very good experience with Ignite Arena. Now, and it wouldn't be an esports event without any technology or production, so on to Kimura and Kylan. So for our production, we will host three streams. Now, we, did, we haven't said this before, but there will be two games taking place at a time. So we will have three streams, two stream, we have three streams in total. There will be two streams for each game that's being played, and there will be one main stream for, to, ho to host the highlights for uh, all the games. Um, so each team will have a choice to use the stream if they want to. So if they use the stream, they, each, each stream will have their own production and tech support group. So each team, each team will have a choice to use that stream that, that we're hosting to, to, put on their, to put on their channel so we can have more of a reach. And yeah, we'll have a tech and, we'll have a tech and production team for each stream. There's various technological equipment that goes into making the event run smoothly. That would include VMIX software, ATEM boards, and PCs and keyboards. We will work with the production and uh, broadcasting team to make sure that everything is of high quality and is engaging with our audience. Now for marketing. On to our marketing. So we have a highly anticipated event. Right now on Instagram, we have 67 followers from our school, and the majority of them are males. And since esports is a male-dominated industry, we wanted to expand it, expand our horizons, and get girls involved because who run the world? Like Beyonce said, girl. Who As run the world? <laughs> girl. <laughs> As I was saying, um, we want to generate 20% of our female audience gaining on Instagram or all the pro social media platforms that we're on as over a course of eight weeks. So for our eight weeks, um, we have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff that is targeting for females mostly because we already have a male and non-binary uh, culture already right now. So with these, they will definitely engage the females and more into getting into like esports and just learning more about it and just you know get in where you fit in. And I feel like you know when you are in a male-dominated situation, you might feel like they have more power, but truthfully, the power is in the tongue. You, you have a lot. Yeah. So now, what you supposed to do without no money? So on to our finance. To start off, we are giving $5K to 50K to run this event, and we're going to start off with our expenses. We're going to spend $10,000 in the venue, which is going to include the production and gaming equipment. Then we have the $30,000 prize pool. Then we, 
3,500. We have the 3,000 price pool. We have the six. We're going to pay 6,000 for the production and production and tech. And then we're going to pay for the food, which is going to be 596, 5,196. Then we're going to pay for the hotel, which is going to be 1,620. Then we're going to pay for also the charter bus, which is going to be 110. Then we're going to pay for the promotional content, which is going to be about $4,000. And this will generate about 27, 27,000 worth of expenses. Now to our revenue. So to make sure that our we generated revenue for our event, we had to come up with ways to sell sell items. We sold food, uh, merchandise, tickets. There were entry fees, and most of our money came from from live streaming on uh, different different plat social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And that all came out to be fifty-two thousand dollars and nine hundred and thirty-six and eighty cents. Um, our ROI, ROI was 89%. And as you can see, we want a sponsor for G Field, which is going to be our diamond sponsor of $20K in sponsorship for capital. Yes. Thank you for listening to our proposal. We thought that it was going to ignite your memories. <laughs> Everybody give a round of applause. Oh, we still got answer questions. Oh, right. Don't worry about it right now. Okay. okay. Anybody have any questions out there? Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Love the enthusiasm. Love the marketing strategy. Um, the question that I have for you all is, for the first two groups, they chose East Sports State and Arlington as their venue of choice. What was the inspiration behind choosing East Sposure and keeping it based on all the amenities and everything that you laid out? What was the inspiration? Um, the East East Sposure event, they they uh, they provide the equipment. That was a big thing. So now we have to, we don't have to pay as much, which is really helpful for our part to make sure we generate revenue and not spending more than we're like getting. For marketing, we chose East Closure because it's more of a community, and it's all about community. When you have support from your community, you feel more motivated to do things. Oh, sorry, you can finish. Okay. Uh, we wanted to use the East Closure Stadium since they gave us an amazing opportunity to use this, do this business pitch. Uh, we just wanted to give back to the community and really thank Mr. Martin over here for giving this, giving us this opportunity. Oh, any more questions? Uh, I have one more question. So I like the fact that you targeted diversity, equity, and inclusion as a primary goal because, yes, gaming is a very male-dominated initiative uh, in, you know, for gaming. So what type of experiences and educational opportunities would you offer for the girls who are participating in the space? We would have people who are specialized in that in eSports that are females for them so they could get asked questions and get their answers to their questions and they would have advice from them and just words of encouragement from somebody who's been there and done that. Okay. Also because we're mostly girls, we understand what it's like to be in classrooms and areas where it's mostly guys. I mean, except for right now, he's the only guy. But <laughs> most of the time, it's really just like us, us girls. So we would want them to get into, honestly, marketing. Like, we're all in marketing. And marketing, it's really help it was really helpful for this because we all have experience in marketing. And if they were to get into eSports, marketing would probably be the best thing for them. Okay. Thank you. And this will also help them, like, know what they want to do in the future because many of the high school students, for example, if we want to target girls, if like this um, project really helped me know, okay, maybe I do want to go into uh, the financial and esports, and it's something that's really helpful. That way, you know what you want to do in the future. Absolutely, thank you. Awesome. Any other questions? Yeah, for sure. What other sponsors would you have if in any? Can you repeat it? What other sponsors would you have if any others? Uh, I think we only have G Fuel. Oh, what well, other sponsors? Yeah. Um, I said Beyonce, but oh, get, get them they don't want Beyonce. Uh, um, our prime since we're doing a Rocket League tournament, uh, our primary like goal would probably be to get sponsored by like, uh, Epic Games since they run they run Rocket League like they own Rocket League, 
So that would be great just to like be under them, ha hosting a tournament for their own game. That would be pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, can you talk, you spoke on marketing being a strong suit for you. Can you talk about some of your challenges? What are some of the challenges that you face to, to get up here before getting up here today? For our challenges, it was mostly with financial because uh, we were basically having to work with them a lot, especially since you, she she is difficult when it comes to money. She's very <laughs> hands on, but I feel like the most part was financial. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Financials was only hard because you can't really generate a lot of money with just selling food, food and concessions. So until we heard about like the live streaming stuff, we was really in like under. We was really under what we needed to make or whatever. I think we were only having like what twenty ten thousand. It wasn't a, it wasn't enough. So the marketing part. Once we figured out that we can market through um, YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. We, we like, what did we do? We see we saw if we could pay for ads to get to share with other people worldwide and through the US. And that helped us a lot because we got to reach like 50,000 people, which which if 50,000 people join our lives, then that's like $3, I think, per view. And that helped a lot, so. Yeah, and as I said, it was the financial one because at first we were really relying on the sponsors. We like, we, relied if we already had the sponsors so we had to go back to the beginning and cover our expenses and everything that we would have to buy and this was really hard as you said because we needed to think back on our mar marketing strategy before we had like our most of our b this is before before most of our revenue was from our sponsors but we realized there's no guarantee that s people will uh, companies will sponsor us as such a small company, so we wanted to really do it on our own first and build our company before we can think about getting any sponsors. And the revenue that you saw was without the 20K from G Fuel. But it would be amazing if they would sponsor us. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so my question goes uh, into you all social media marketing and specifically content. Uh, what strategy would you all employ with that eight-week program specifically towards content? And who would you be, how would you target your target audience? And before that, before you answer, on top of that, who would be your ideal individual that you would want to create content with? We got Beyonce, but if you had somebody right, else, right, who would be? I got you, I got you. Game, Game. okay. So for the marketing strategy, we were already thinking about if we're going to promote an esports event, we already know that we're going to get males in because it's a very male dominated field. So we were like, if we pr if we promote our content towards a uh, more female audience, then we will can get more more diversity and more people rather than just whoever is already in the field and give girls a better opportunity to be in esports. We would like to collaborate with Sniper Wolf because I know she was popular back then, but with this, she could gain more followers and just become very active in our community and more known. Um, I know she was known on YouTube, but other platforms like YouTube and stuff and TikTok, she could get more known on there. And it just helped everybody out, like especially girls who are discouraged. When you see somebody that like is in your same position, you want you feel like motivated to do stuff because you see somebody else who've done it, who started from the bottom and is working their way up. Also, um, we would like to we would like to we would like it to reach uh, possibly Phase Clan. Uh, they're they're like really big in this game. Uh, they just won the turn. They just won the Rocket League tournament, the FCS tournament. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty sure if they got to it, then we would. It, business would be booming. For yeah. Awesome. Um, any other questions? All right, let's give them a round of applause. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank y'all so much. So we're gonna do a, a quick debrief so we can identify the actual uh, the scores, the rubrics. So we got a judge, so Matt. So I'm gonna act as a judge as well as that of Trey is gonna be a judge. So we're gonna put together the numbers really quickly. And then we're going to come back and be able to distribute the actual winner of today's business plan competition. Y'all ready? <laughs> awesome. Give us five minutes.
You ready, Britt? Trey. All right, all right. So we're going to. Man, I'm getting old. <laughs> I thought that would be easy. Awesome. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so once we call your name, by the way, first off, awesome. First off, this is awesome. First off, good job, everybody, in regards to presenting. I know it was not easy, uh, but you guys and ladies persevered through it, and it was really cool. Like, it was really good to be able to see the thought process that you guys and ladies put together inside of this. So, you know, give yourselves a, a, a pat on the back and a round of applause. Great job. <laughs> Great job. Where's the run? Give me one second. Orion. Where you at, my man? You want to go get him? Yeah, go get him real quick. Oh, you're right. All right, so we got to have the, the main videographer in here. So he's probably somewhere around here, but Brittany's about to go get him real quick. Um, but at the same time, I just want to be able to say again, like, thank you guys so much. Um, right now, what you've experienced in regards to a business plan competition, I can tell you, you know, out of experience, uh, my last year in college in 2011, uh, it was about we spent the whole semester – or actually a whole year, my whole 12th, uh, my whole um, senior year in college, we had to create a business and then actually pitch it at the end. And that was the way that we were able to get our diploma from an entrepreneurship perspective. So entrepreneurship, what you've done right now, I can tell you that every day we have to pitch. Thinking about exposure in itself, like we're pitching our company all the time, not only just to investors, but clients and customers and, you know, community people and instructors and educators and such. So you're never going to not pitch. So no one take this opportunity from your perspective that you are always going to be in a position to where you're going to have to talk in front of individuals. You're going to have to be able to prove what your metrics are and you're going to get you know, like really tough questions all the time. But it's your perseverance that keeps you getting better and better and better and better. I can definitely tell you, when we first started, the pitch of this company and companies prior wasn't as good as it was to, as it is today. It just took practice. And what you've done right now is you started that foundational pr principle of practicing. You may not be in esports or gaming. You may be in medical field. You may be in oil and gas. You may be in any industry. But I can guarantee you you're going to be in a position where you have to either pitch yourself to a company or you're going to be pitching your company to that of a prospective client, an investor, a partner, or anybody. Your family, you're going to have to be able to explain, why are you going down this route, you know? So just think about your practice that you did right now is going to carry you throughout your life. This is not going to be the last time you do this. We pitch every day almost, you know? So in this instance, right now, just know that this is not going down the drain. You are really gonna take this lesson and you're gonna expound on it. So you're gonna think about this five, 10 years from now. Do you have anything to say? I would just say, I hope you guys learned a little bit about yourselves throughout this process and project. Um, there were some highs and some lows and you guys learned a little bit about how to work and collaborate as teams. But also remember, like Danny just mentioned, it's important for you to also identify how you're marketing yourself, how you carry yourself, the presentation, the pride that you put into the work, and the perseverance of dealing with objectives. So kudos to all of you guys for all of the hard work, and I've been honored and privileged to be able to share and just kind of spend a little bit of time with you and, you know, watching uh, the next generation of future leaders in all spaces. I want to thank awesome. you all for showing up. I want to thank you for how you showed up. Uh, I know it was a lot of your classmates that were not here, right? And so they don't get to have this awesome experience. Um, and so this is really cool that you came. If you want to come tomorrow as well, uh, we can be able to give you a walkthrough, a behind-the-scenes look of the event, because uh, this is a really cool thing that's going on here this weekend. Uh, and so thank you all so much for coming and for putting the effort in. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we hope that you all take what you learned throughout these past few weeks and carry it over, add it to your resume, add it to your portfolio. So what we're going to do now is we're going to call everybody up, 
we have some certificates for you. We're going to take pictures, and then we're going to announce the actual winner. So no, y'all are eating. Get those last bites in. We're going to call y'all up. Uh, don't want to catch you off guard. Uh, so. And then once you come up, just stand up here. Stay up here until everyone has finished uh, their names, until we got off all cert cert uh, certificates. And then we're going to take a picture with everyone. If you can hold up the certificate with it open, some individuals uh, we don't have certification certificates from because of it was just it was just uh, one or two people because they either didn't sign in um, like through the online form or they signed in late. Okay, so it's like one or two people. One or two. Uh, so if you don't have one, it's because two. you didn't sign up. Yeah. But if you did get one, just raise it up and we'll take a picture and then we'll come back. Everybody will go back out into the crowd and then we'll announce the winners. All, All right. right. So first up, we have Carlos. Good job, Carlos. Devin. Good job. Should I just ask Carlos? Emily. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Jacob. Good job, Jacob. Gamily. Good job. Jimmy. Jimmy. Thank you. Jaira. Julian. Awesome. Good job, Julian. And you can foul in the front one. Camo. Good job. Good job. Kylan. Good job. You can foul, foul over. Mark. Good job, man. Will. Good job. Oh, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> Mark. Mark. Has one in there? Yeah. All right, so if y'all can just all of you, if y'all can just kind of get like staggered a little bit. Stagger? Like, tall people to the back, then maybe. Yeah, tall people to the, the back. Two holes probably will work for you. Okay. <laughs> everybody give a round of applause to everybody. Awesome. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I mean, McDonald's on three. <laughs>
All right. Hold up. One second. Oh, Danny, my slide show, my slide show, my slide show. So as Danny gets himself together back there, uh, with East Bulger, East Bulger for All is the nonprofit, and we really focus on hands-on experiences. We do have some summer programming uh, available uh, for you all, so you can definitely get some training. <laughs> okay. Danny, I already have that. I have that already. Mm -hmm. You fix it? Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, so for the winners of today's eSports business plan competition, we have, oh, Trey. Come here real quick, because you talked to me about this. All right, so I know, I'm so sorry, like the anticipation. <laughs> it's commercial break. Okay, I did that on purpose, y'all. Um, talk about right now the presentations that you talked to me about. Yes. Talk to me about like each presentation, and I'm going to announce the winner right now, but he's also going to be able to talk about the actual presentation so you can know from a context perspective. Yeah, so the why, just kind of speak on the why to everybody. Okay. So between each presentation, there were some highs, there were some lows, there were some positive spots and some low spots. Um, for you guys, you had um, a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy um, and a lot that you wanted to pack in a unique initiative. Um, one of the cons was um, a lot of tournaments within a 12-hour period. And so as you guys think about programming and operations and the cost that come with doing that, it's probably better to scale some of that down and have a little bit more of a vivid understanding of, okay, let's kind of target a few and let's try to prioritize making those three the best so that way your partners and your sponsors can get a lot of ROI. You guys want to pack a lot because you were asking for a lot. Next time, let's be a little bit more realistic about the expectations. Trooper, you stood firm in the midst of adversity and you brought home a direct, you know, a direct product. Pro, you kept it linear. You had one program, one tournament, one initiative that you wanted to address. Um, the problem just wasn't enough visual aesthetics to drive the vision home. A lot of wording, not enough pictures. So just making sure next time when you want to promote that, if you're doing one, you want to make sure you blow that one out of the water and make everybody know, like, this is the best Fortnite tournament you should sign up for. But your, your program was together. Your, your metrics and your, uh, your money and how you want to do your finances was together, so I applaud you for the uh, attention to all the detail that you put into your program. And for you all, um, lots of bright energy. It was a lot of uh, positive things to look forward to, um, and the way you had a directory, a lot of things to click on, which in, in an internet world, people like to click and see options, so you provided a lot of those aesthetics. Uh, the marketing plan was put together nicely. You guys came together visually and you know visually gave a nice presentation to us. And uh, the pro and the con that I have for you guys is uh, the marketing expectations. To put all your eggs into a digital basket can sometimes come back and backfire. Um, if you're targeting a specific group, you want to make sure that you also have programs that hit that specific group, even though you internally have other initiatives that you want to uh, accomplish throughout the objective. Make sure that you diversify the portfolio and make sure that everybody feels included and welcome to be a part of it so that way understanding can be the root equation to what you're doing. But all, overall, great straight to the point, great plan, great marketing, and everybody's voice was heard in there. So true kudos. Awesome. So for the winner of today's eSports business pitch competition, we have Ignite Arena. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. So we're going to give one more to the, X, the, the HyperX, so just you guys can be able to get them, as well as we got you guys' medals as well. Good job, great everybody. Job, what you job, got? There's no, there's no losers in this. You guys are going to all get something from us.
All right, again, everybody give everybody a round of applause. This has been amazing. Definitely, definitely thank y'all so much for your participation. Good job. So, letting you guys know, the summer is coming up. And I told you guys in class that, you know, for us right now, finding good talent and helping grow the ecosystem is very important for us. So I told you, we're going to be providing some pretty cool opportunities to be able to work for us during the summer. And I've kept my eye on everybody that's been working really, really hard. So if, you're gonna, if you hear from us or anybody on our team, just know it's because of the work that you put in throughout this full three weeks. I'm really appreciative. I've seen you. I've seen you put in the work. So definitely, if you hear from me, just know it's because of the work that you put in and the time. You're surprised us. I, I've been in these class seeing you guys every single day almost, right? And the presentations you had in the class didn't look like these today. It didn't look like, I was nervous. I was like, oh man, this is going to be, this is going to be, oh man. But today, y'all came with it, which is really, really awesome to be able to see. So good, that shows you that you guys took this serious and y'all weren't playing in the class. So thank y'all so much for that. And I definitely am, I'm, I see it. And when you hear from me, just know it's because of the work that you put in there. So thank y'all so much for today. All right, and that concludes today. What a day. Thank y'all. Woo!